Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is the January 18th, 2022 meeting of the Transportation Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works and I'm the Chair of the Commission. I'd like to announce the audio and video recording of this meeting. Um, we have also enabled transcription. Uh, Beth, when you are ready, please call the roll. Donna, are you here? Yes. Jody? Yes. Wayne is not here still? No, I'm here. Oh, you are, sorry. Wayne, are you here? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Karen? Here. Adam? I thought I saw Adam earlier. Are you here, Adam? He's here, I've asked him to unmute. Uh, yes, I'm here. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jamie? Uh, Diana? I am here. And Jamila, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Here, it's Jamila. Jamila, thank you. Thank you. Everybody's here except Jamie. Okay, thanks, Beth. Okay, so um, next we'll move to the public comment section of the meeting. Uh, I know that there may be folks here to speak to particular agenda items. So if you are here to speak to a particular item that's on the agenda, I would ask that you hold your comment until that time, just makes for a more orderly meeting. Um, but for those who may not be here to speak to any particular agenda item and who would like to address the commission, um, you're welcome to raise your hand, your virtual hand, and uh, we will recognize you and you can speak or again, you can wait if you're here for a particular agenda item. Is there anyone uh, who would like to speak for public comment? Okay, I'm looking and seeing none. We will move on to approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, which was December 21st, 2021. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? So moved, Twain. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? I'm sorry, who was the second, please? It, I think it was both me and Chief Casper. No? Okay, then it was me and somebody else, but uh, this is Karen. I believe that Wayne seconded. No, I thought, Wayne's, I thought Wayne was the first. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. We're going with Wayne and Karen. Okay, any, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? I will abstain, I was not present. Jody? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Adam? Yes. Diana? Yes. Jamila? Um, I wasn't present, I'll abstain. And that passes. Okay, thank you, Beth. Six. Now now we'll go to reports from departments and subcommittees. I have a few DPW related updates uh, to share. We've installed a new multi-way stop at the intersection of Maple Street and Pine Street in Florence. There are multiple warning signs in all directions approaching that intersection. And we have heard uh, now that folks have, have sort of gotten used to the new signs, we've heard uh, some positive commentary on that. Um, we have our, our paving contractor has stopped all work for the winter and we will resume punch list items in the spring and that includes uh, roadway markings uh, on, at a lot of locations throughout the city uh, once the weather cooperates. Um, there are multiple mass DOT projects underway right now exit 19 at Damon Road, the I-91 bridges over Route 5, the railroad and Hockenham Road project. Also Damon Road reconstruction and King Street corridor improvements have paused for the winter and will resume in the spring. These are all projects that are managed by MassDOT. So if folks have questions about those projects, that those should be directed to MassDOT. Those are DPW updates. Any other departments or subcommittees have anything they wish to share? This is Wayne for planning, just a very quick report. So likewise, we have a few construction projects, Pleasant Street, Leonard Street, PBTA bus stop, all of which are halted for the winter. Um, three things we're working on right now. Our complete streets prioritization plan is out of date. 
So we're working with VHB, a consultant, to update that. We're using the biped committee as a sounding board, but once we have their input, we are hoping to get on your next agenda to get Transportation Parking Commission's uh, input, hopefully in February. Um, we have a contract for bike path feasibility that's underway for sort of, if we built 13 miles of rail trails in the last dozen years, this is the plan for what we do over the next dozen years. Um, and then finally, we're looking at, do we do a new round of Valley bike expansion um, and looking at the potential for two new Valley bike stations in 2022 or 2023. That's it. Thanks, Wayne. Anyone else have anything to share? Okay, next is matters before the commission. First, a proposed ordinance relative to stop signs in the Village Hill neighborhood. I will read the ordinance and then uh, describe its purpose. It's in the year 2022, upon the recommendation of the Transportation Parking Commission, an ordinance relative to stop signs in the Village Hill neighborhood. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council assembled as follows. Section 1. That section 312-113 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-113, Schedule 12, Stop and Yield Intersections. A, isolated stop signs. Stop intersections are established at the following locations. So it's been revised 1015, 1981, 1015-1981, 1015-1982, 1015-1983, 11-5-1998, 17-1999, 36-2003, 12-2-2004. Location, Olander Drive, direction of travel west at the intersection of Village Hill Road. Location, Village Hill Road, direction of travel north at the intersection of Ford Crossing and Higgins Way. D, multi-way stop signs. Multi-way stop intersections are established at the following locations. Location, Moser Street, direction of travel east-west, the intersection of Bisanti Drive. Location, Moser Street, direction of travel east-west at the intersection of Village Hill Road. Location, Moser Street, direction of travel east at the intersection of Olander Drive. Location, Musanti Drive, direction of travel north-south, the intersection of Moser Street. Location, Olander Drive, direction of travel north-south, the intersection of Moser Street. Um, so it's a very long ordinance, um, which is proposing a new stop sign on Village Hill Road at Ford Crossing in Higgins Way. Stop sign is not currently in existence there. And what this ordinance actually does is it codifies stop signs which are in the Village Hill neighborhood, which exist, but which are actually not part of the code. Um, so there are a lot of, of stop signs throughout Village Hill, but, but they are not actually in our code of ordinances. So this, um, the ordinance seeks to correct that and it, it seeks to, again, codify the existing ordinances. I see Wayne's hand up. Go ahead, Wayne. Just for the record, I live near one of these signs, so I'm going to remove myself from all discussions of this project. Thanks, Wayne. Um, does anybody have any comments about the proposed ordinance or any questions? Councillor Gore, go ahead. If I, I live in Village Hill, can I still participate? Um, I'm sorry, that's a, a procedural question. Councillor Foster, please help me answer that. I'm, you know what, Councillor Gore, I would say, I, I don't wanna answer without you having a chance to check with Solicitor Seawald. Um, in general, the conflict of interest would be if you could anticipate a financial um, benefit to yourself or a family member from a discussion. However, as you saw, Director Fiden also recused himself from this discussion. So uh, I, I wish I had a more definitive answer. Oh, I don't think I have to recuse myself then. I think I'm fine. You're probably fine just to disclose that, um, that, that, you, that you live in the neighborhood. Um, Thank you, Councillor Foster. 
Um, so I'll, I'll also add that that uh, Councillor Foster and I did take a walk around the Village Hill, uh, the the entire area. We looked at all of these intersections, and and what I will add is that there's not heavy traffic flow here. These are not intersections where you see a very high traffic volume, but they're intersections where you definitely see folks get confused. Um, about what they should or shouldn't be doing and see cars frequently approach a, an area and, and maybe they're not sure what the other one's going to do. So um, we believe that stop controls are warranted here. We actually commissioned an outside engineering study and, and had outside consultants actually review each of these intersections and confirm that the signs which are present are appropriate and make recommendations to us. This is pretty uh, standard operating procedure that we do. Um, sometimes for areas like this. So um, we're confident that these recommendations are solid and sound and should be implemented. Any further discussion on this? Councillor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, Director Lascalia, thank you for your time and for the walk around and, and the traffic study and the work on this. Um, particularly the, the stop sign on Village Hill Road heading north toward Higgins Way. Um, the map, I think the Google map doesn't show that there's actually a neighborhood there, but just for, for background for people who aren't familiar with it, across um, Higgins Way kind of has a steep hill and dip down and it can be very difficult. Um, the sight lines there are very difficult. And then through the, the traffic study, um, you know, that then it came to light that through the code, no, code of ordinances for the other stop signs that are here, there. So that's basically housekeeping. The new stop sign um, on the direction of Travel Village Hill Road North uh, across Ford Crossing um, is something that the residents of Village Hill um, have been coming to me with for um, more than two years now um, of a real desire to see some traffic control at that intersection. Um, and so I'm really pleased to see this um, as something that, that we can move forward. But this is, um, of all the things I've heard about as a counselor, probably the topic I've heard about more than anything else um, is, is this particular intersection and a desire for traffic control there. Um. Thanks, Councillor. And I will just also add that, that Higgins Way is private. Um, so the city actually has no authority to uh, even place a stop sign there. Um, it, it, it's actually not a, a public roadway. Um, but Councillor Foster and I have spoken, um, and, and I, I think that the neighborhood understands that having a stop sign on that approach is necessary there and is actually recommended. Um, so this is one of these scenarios where we actually have to work with a neighborhood group to implement uh, a, a recommendation like this when the city actually has no authority to pass an ordinance on private property. So that's that's just something for when this goes to council. If folks are wondering, like, why isn't that stop sign actually in this ordinance? That's the reason, because it's actually a, a private way. Any other questions or further discussion on this? And I don't believe I asked for a motion for a positive recommendation on this. So I will now ask for a motion, uh, unless Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that I did. No, you are correct. You did not ask okay, for a so, uh, Okay, so I will ask for a motion for a positive recommendation on this ordinance, please. Move a positive recommendation. Second. Okay, and just confirming there is no further discussion. Okay, and I also wanna confirm that there is no one here from the public who wishes to comment on this. So I know there are some folks here, so I just wanna confirm that there's no one who wishes to speak on this matter. Okay, seeing and hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Wayne? Abstain. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Adam? Yes. Uh, Diana? Yes. And Jamila? Yes. That motion passes. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next we move to a discussion of additional accessible, accessible space at 22-34 New South Street. Um, 
Wayne, can you confirm for me that, that Keith is not present and this agenda item should be tabled? Yes, Keith is not present. He's out for a while. Okay. All right. So we will need to uh, table this until the disability um, coordinator, I believe that's his title, it can be present to speak. Wait, Councillor Foster, go ahead. Sure. I was just wondering, because this is the second month this has come up, and I guess we don't know, but I, I don't know what the urgency of this request is. If, if um, Director Fiden, I don't know if you know if there's another way that we should be seeking more information or if it's not so urgent that, that we can wait um, for future meetings. Yeah, I don't think it's urgent. This is a request from that came before the Disabilities Committee. I will, if Keith isn't back by their next meeting, I will ask them to give me more background. Thank you. Okay, so we will um, move through that agenda item. And next we will move to discussion of a parking request for Stoddard Street. Um, so this, uh, a lot of times neighborhoods submit a parking requests through the portal on our website. This is a request that was submitted uh, last year in July of 2021. The concern is that usually people know to park so the car can weave through the parked cars to make it safely down Stoddard Street. From time to time, both sides of the road have parked cars and it is difficult for a small car to drive between them an emergency vehicle would not be able to pass down the road to get to a home. So the person who submitted this request requested permit parking only on one side of the road. So we received the request and uh, did a brief engineering assessment of the street, which I will share with you now. Stoddard Street is approximately 900 feet long. It's 20 to 23 feet wide, and it connects State Street and Prospect Street. Parking is allowed on both sides of the street for the entire length. A typical parking space is eight feet wide. Parking on one, seat, on one side leaves about 12 to 15 feet, which is enough for an emergency vehicle to get by. If vehicles are parked directly across from each other or offset only slightly, it would prevent passage by any vehicle. Given the street dimensions, it is DPW's opinion that parking should be prohibited on one side. The, the purpose of the discussion here at TPC this afternoon to allow residents the opportunity to speak to us, um, specifically the folks who, who may have gotten together and, and submitted this request. We would like to hear from you about what your challenges are and help us to make the best decision possible so that we can draft an ordinance which will um, improve conditions in the neighborhood. So I, I will open it up to anyone from the public who is here to speak about Stoddard Street, if, if there is anyone here who wishes to speak about that. You're welcome to uh, raise your hand. Okay, I see Laurel and Jeff. Could I also state that when you speak, before you, when you start speaking, if you could give your full name and your uh, town of residence, please. Sure, this is Laurel Rogers. I live at 17 Stoddard Street and I appreciate the issue. Um, I'm not sure permit parking is necessary, but we also are concerned that if it's one-sided, whether cars will speed up our street as a cut through because of the new traffic light coming up. And we'd like you to have a, give us a suggestion on how that could be addressed. I don't know, speed humps or more signage, but that would be something I'd like DPW to take into consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comment. And I'll see, I feel like I saw one other hand and then I can, I can respond. Uh, Susan, I see your actual hand. Let me unmute you there. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Michael Klein Barrent. I live on Stoddard Street, Northampton. Um, lived here for 43 years. Uh, par parking is an issue on this street at times. Um, my, my concern is also echoing what Laurel said is if when the new stoplight goes in at State and Finn, if people are going to use Stoddard Street to shoot down Stoddard and cut down through Church Street to get to King Street and avoid the uh, traffic light completely. Um, it might be a suggestion, 
have parking on one side and then make Stoddard Street possibly a one way going up from State Street. Um, it's just a suggestion. I don't know if that would work or if that would help, but um, I'm, I'm just concerned with the stoplight going in at State and Finn that this would then become a cut through. Okay, thank you. Oh, I see another hand. Forest is the name on the screen. Let me unmute you. Hold on just a moment. You're, you're still muted. So hold on, we, we have to try to get you unmuted here. Just give us a moment. It should have asked you to unmute yourself. Do you see something where it says? Yeah. Uh, my name is Forrest. That is my complete legal name. I live here on Stoddard and echoing what uh, Mike and Laurel said, parking can sometimes be an issue on the street and finding a solution that would also now take into effect what's going to happen in, in, in that, and I'd like to see how it's going to happen with the potential of Stoddard Street becoming a cut through. Um, as it is, often cars come through and at speeds that they shouldn't. So you know, there are not even any signs to say slow down. So I hope that you will take that in consideration. And also I'm just curious as a question, if it did become one-sided parking, what side would it be? And how do you determine that? Okay. Thank you. So I'll, I'll try to respond to, um, I, I'll try to respond to all of these. I just want to see if there's anybody else who has any comment on this from the public before I do. Um, and I don't see anybody else. Um, so to answer the, the, the last question first, if you will, I, one of the things that we like to do is get input from the residents. Um, Anytime we make parking changes, just to to confirm that that we're doing something that um, you know is actually going to benefit everybody here. Um, generally, what we try to look at is what side of the road there are sidewalks on. The more curb cuts, hydrants, um, curb cuts, and and hydrants, um, and and any sort of ramp for any reason for crossing crosswalk something. I'm just talking sort of generally. Um, we, we would not want to uh, have parking on a side where we have a lot of obstacles where folks have to sort of work around those obstacles or maybe parking too close to those obstacles like driveways or fire hydrants and, and then creating further issues. So we always wanna try to go with the cleaner side of the street from an infrastructure standpoint um, and allow parking on that side of the street versus the other side of the street. So that's just sort of what we look at when we make a, any sort of recommendation like this. And procedurally, what we would do is we would assess the area and then make a recommendation in the form of a proposed ordinance, which we would share with your city councilor is so that you know there could be a conversation before um, a, anything further happens. Um, so that's the first part of the question. The, the second sort of larger issue is the speeding and the potential cut through due to the traffic light. Um, we, we had uh, our, our consultant, the city's consultant do extensive modeling about what uh, the imposition of a traffic light um, that, that's going in at, at the end of State Street could potentially do to adjacent side streets. And that has a lot to do with what is the timing of the light. And, and so people are only going to cut through the side streets if, if the light cycle is problematic. So if, if we're seeing major queuing at that intersection, then people are going to start to look for an alternate path. Now, the, the queuing that happens at that intersection right now is, it, it, a, according to the, the traffic modeling that has been done, is actually more significant than the queuing that is expected once the traffic light goes in. The question is, psychologically, will people feel like they're actually beating this light, um, you know, beating the light? 
um, but once it, it's actually operational. So the, the impacts of that will not be known until the light is in and until the light is actually operating. Um, but we are certainly prepared to respond to that. Um, we have the ability to change the cycling of that light to to increase it um, or, or to to sort of increase the cycle time, if you will, or decrease the cycle time, depending on what we're seeing and depending on what the queuing looks like at that intersection. Um, but, you know, in order to uh, actually get this traffic light sort of through the mass DOT process, we had to prove that the light would be beneficial um, and that it would actually improve conditions and not cause deleterious effects to, to the uh, neighborhoods. So I, I will say that, but again, it's, it, it, you know, you never really know what's going to happen. Um, and, and I certainly uh, can't predict driver behavior. So I hear the concerns and I have heard the concerns from other side streets in the area. And it's something we're gonna have to watch very carefully when that traffic signal is actually commissioned. Moving a street to a one-way street does require additional engineering study where we would have to determine what impacts, if any, there may be on uh, adjoining streets. Um, so if, if we were to suppose that, that you know, making Stoddard be a one-way street, um, would be a good idea. We would actually have to model that and, and be certain we weren't causing unanticipated problems in some other location. Um, so I, I think it, that, it, you know, again, the impacts of, of this light may be nothing or they may be something. Um, given the age of this request and, you know, what we see is, is likely a, a problematic parking situation, um, we felt that it was important that that this issue come before the commission and that we make a move on this um, to assist the neighborhood. So that's why we're here today. Um, and I I would be um, grateful to hear from other members of the commission who may have some comments if they feel that um, we should uh, um, consider, you know, looking at parking on one side of the street here. Um, or if the residents in the neighborhood feel like we want to hold and see what's going to happen with this traffic signal, which may, be, may not be commissioned for, for many months. So that's, that's really the question. So I'm looking for input from both the neighborhood and other members of the commission. Diana, go ahead. Diana, you're, you're muted. There we go. Yeah. Um, can I ask, I didn't hear, when there are people parked on either side of the street, um, how much space is available for emergency vehicles? No space. Okay, so so right now, if people are directly parked, then that, that okay. Yeah. The, that, the street, yeah, the street is, is actually only between 20 and 23 feet wide. A typical vehicle is um, eight feet wide. So mathematically, you you actually can't really squeeze. I mean, you can barely squeeze a car through there, if at all. Um, and you're certainly not going to squeeze, you know, a, a a fire truck. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. I know that there's always a concern about speedy traffic and and people cutting through there off off prospect. But I'm I'm just really concerned about emergency vehicles in particular. Um, if somebody does have an emergency, you know, I, I would hate to think that that fear of something kind of unknown that we can keep an eye on and that has been studied that that would would stand in the way of of something that you know you know you hope there aren't going to be emergencies, but if there are, it it seems to me that this would be a more urgent thing, and that if if there were problems, maybe we could revisit the parking issue later. But in the meantime, just protecting the people on the street seems seems like it has some urgency to it. Yep, I would agree with that assessment. Um, and, and I would also add the original requester and, and um, you know, had, had mentioned a, a permit system. Um, that's not generally something that has been supported by previous councils. Um, it, it's, it's been more of a, um, you know, there's, there's no parking here. So seasonal parking, permit parking is, is generally not something 
that Northampton councils have have um, wanted to allow. Um, so anytime there are parking prohibitions, they are generally year round permanent and they apply to all people in cars, regardless of their residency. So I'll just sort of add that. Anyone else have any comments on that? Any of the residents have a, a comment on, on feeling Laurel they, and Jeff. Yes, Laurel and Jeff, go ahead. We'll unmute you. Okay. I just had one quick comment. You answered the question about the permit, um, but I, I wanted to just note that it's already a cut through street that we see a lot of cars zipping up and down our street. So I agree, we need to be safer. And if we need to go to one side of that's fine, but I'd like to keep an eye on the speed of, of the cars whipping up and down our street. Thanks. Duly noted, thank you very much. Councillor Nash, I see your hand up. I, I couldn't resist. You put a call out to the public. And, um, and I was wondering if this might be a, uh, a place where we could try a parking chicane idea. And the idea being that we create two parking zones that, um, that offset the traffic so that there's not this tunnel vision of, oh, I can just head down Stoddard that as I'm looking ahead down Stoddard, I'll see a, a row of parked cars that will cause me to make a kind of a jog in my, um, in my path. And that um, might have um, an effect to slow down traffic. That is my thought. I'll go back to being a member of the public. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. I appreciate the comment. This is, I, you know, I, I think this is a, an idea that we've talked about sort of over the years, if you will. Um, with Stoddard Street being 900 feet long, we don't necessarily have a lot of room to play with here. Um, so what we will do is, is it, we'll actually have to go out and walk the street and sort of look at what we've got for impediments in the street and see if that's something that that we could entertain um, and where Councillor Nash is is speaking of is is having a stretch where we have parking say on the right hand side of the road and then a stretch where we have parking on the left hand side of the road and that is actually going to create a sort of a slalom effect if you will which will naturally uh, slow passing traffic down. So it's a, a traffic calming mechanism that we can employ um, in this way, actually through an ordinance. It's just unclear to me if we have enough space to implement something like that here with a 900 foot long road, that, that's the only issue. Adam, I see your hand up, go ahead. Hi, um, I would just like to say that I was actually going to suggest um, the parking chicane that uh, Councillor Nass Nash suggested as well. Um, I, I will say that I also, I live on King Street and I work in Florence um, and I actually do use Stoddard Street as a cut through, um, mainly because of the direction that I have to travel once I get onto King Street. But um, uh, in the five years that I've been driving on Stoddard Street, I would say that um, I haven't run into a situation where I haven't been able to drive through, but I can definitely see where that would be true of emergency vehicles. But this also seems fairly, is this a fairly typical width for um, side streets? Like, because uh, sometimes just for a variety, I will drive down, uh, what's the next street there? Is that Perkins yep. uh, after Stoddard? Yes. Yeah, I think so. That's also extremely tight. Um, I'd say it's even tighter than Stoddard. So I think that this is a fairly, this is a fairly common uh, problem. I would think that that would also be true on the street that I would live in, but, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But I just wanted to support Jim Nash's um, suggestion for a parking chicane or slalom. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I think this is a very common width for a lot of streets. And we, you know, when we receive complaints about it, you know, then we have to make a decision about if we're going to act. You know, there's a lot of streets that are like this, but there's not a problem, um, meaning, you know, it's, it's residential. 
um, or primarily residential, but sometimes, you know, these things happen and then we have to respond. I saw a hand from someone. Forrest, go ahead. I see your hand up again. I'll unmute you. I just wanted to say the, um, the way it is now with parking on both sides actually is, it does as a comment, just does slow down traffic. It, when there either is no, not many cars on one side or um, that's when you, you, I see cars going much faster. But that idea of having them alternating, they, they, it does serve the purpose of slowing them down. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and really what this will boil down to is do we have the length to implement something like this? And what do we have for curb cuts and hydrants that, that could potentially be an impediment to that? Any other comments on this from members of the commission or any folks who are here from Stoddard Street? Uh, Nancy, go ahead. When you were talking about um, whether we have enough room, just for members of the public, just to um, kind of give a summary of the existing ordinances, remember that you lose 20 feet, no parking, 20 feet to an intersection, no parking, three feet to a driveway, so that's on either side, 10 feet to a fire hydrant. So you do lose a lot of distance, like Donna is saying. Um, so that does impact how much room is going to be available to be able to, to uh, lay out alternating no parking zones. Um, thanks, Nancy. I appreciate that. So at this point, what we'll do is uh, we certainly it, hear the comments pro, from the folks on Soddard Street, understand the, the speed issue. I will confer um, with our engineering division and we will see what we can lay out here given the landscape and we will be back in touch with the neighborhood. Does anyone else have any further comments on this? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will revisit this uh, at a later meeting and we will be in touch uh, with the neighborhood prior to doing that. So thank you to the folks who, who came out today. I appreciate it. Okay, moving on as a Donna, I only yeah. have one person's email to be able to be in touch. So they should email me if they want me to reach out to them when. Oh, okay. So yes, uh, email to um, Cindy, can you put that? Can you put this in the chat for folks? Um, I, I'm not sure if you can or not, or if the chat is uh, on, but our, our email address is dpwinfo at northamptonma.gov for folks who wish to contact us so that we can stay in touch about this matter. So that's dpwinfo at northamptonma.gov. And Cindy just put that in the chat. So if you could just share your contact information with us, whether it's a email or phone number or whatever your preferred method is, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Okay, next is a discussion of a parking request for Parsons Street. This is item 5D. The parking request on Parsons Street was submitted um, it, both in 2019 and 2020. Parsons says, I'm writing based on the advice of Councillor Jim Nash, who I approached last year about this problem. Parsons Street is very narrow and cars, trucks, and buses must drive onto our lawn to make the turn from North Street onto Parsons. I sent Councillor Nash pictures of tire tracks on our lawn, which is an almost daily occurrence. It is worse in winter when there's snow on the street. These spaces are far from downtown and removing them would, neg would not negatively impact downtown or neighborhood parking. Then the person goes on to write that Parsons Street is too narrow near the corner. And when cars are traveling in both directions, they need to drive onto my lawn to let each other pass. The request is a no parking zone for one house um, for one house length on Parsons Road. Um, so this is, we're gonna, um, we're gonna see if we can um, just describe this a little bit better. Um, so I will, that, that was the parking request that we received. So now I'll comment on this. So Parsons Street is approximately 2000 feet long and has a width varying between 20 and 30 feet. 
Parking is prohibited on both sides from Union Street to Bridge Street and on the northeasterly side from Union Street to North Street and on the southwesterly side from Union Street to Walnut Street. So parking on the southwest side between Walnut Street and North Street leaves around 13 feet for the traveled way. I think anyone who's been on Parson Street knows that it is extraordinarily narrow. So the property in question here is on the corner of North Street and Parson, and Parson Street. Um, so I, I think that what we're looking at is a very, very tight area here um, and a very narrow area. So I didn't know if uh, either someone from Parson Street or if Councillor Nash would be willing to speak to this. There's anyone here to shed a little more light on this than I already have. Right. Councilor okay. Nash, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so um, that the concern here is that, so what happens is that we know that trucks get lost in the, these neighborhoods, um, you know, around North Street. And also what happens on Parsons Street, it's also the route down which um, uh, school buses will travel. And as they make the turn onto Parsons Street from North Street, that if there's cars parked within, I, I don't know, the first 20 feet or so, that, it, that to make the turn, the larger vehicle needs, the back tires are gonna cross, uh, you know, across the sidewalk at that point and onto this resident's um, lawn and, and leaving, you know, um, very big um, tire marks and that it happens pretty routinely. So the request is to extend a, the no parking zone from, uh, let's see, from North Street southward <laughs> towards, towards Bridge Street School to, to a, so allow for enough room for larger vehicles to be able to turn without having the back tires go on the lawn. That's my interpretation of this. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. And that, that, is, that is our interpretation as well. And as I mentioned, we're looking at a varying width here, um, but this is, I, I think we just you know discussed this in the last agenda item. This is actually a pretty standard width for a city roadway and we're definitely running into problems with you know large vehicles or really any vehicle trying to make this corner. Um, and particularly if you get a little snow load on the side of the street, um, that's just creating even more problems. So we, I, I think what we would be looking at is, is making a more extensive parking prohibition near the intersection of Parsons and North Street than the, um, the 20 feet intersection um, prohibition that currently exists. So, so we'd probably be looking at running this out 100 or 200 feet. Um, so that is, that is the request. And, um, you know, based on the width of the street, I think it's, it's uh, completely valid to bring this forward. Go ahead, I, Councillor. I do have one concern that we not make it too big. This, this parking prohibition that um, the house on the corner opposite the, the person who made this request um, has, um, and, and I think the next house on the street has folks who, who will rent and will park on the street. And that, um, that I just want, you know, that yes, we need to make sure that vehicles can, you know, have a proper turning radius and be safe, but I, I just don't want to see us uh, lose too much parking there. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. I just want to confirm that there's no one from the public who's here to speak to this or no residents of Parson Street or the surrounding areas who, who wish to comment on this. Okay, any further discussion from any members of the commission? Councillor Foster, go ahead. Just wanted to add that um, that's, that's a spot that makes a lot of sense to me to look at extending Councillor Nash. I hear the concern about not removing too much parking. My kids go to Bridge Street School. Um, certainly I've spent many times down Parsons, especially with heavy traffic and cars trying to turn. And that's really a, a particularly tight turn and challenging intersection. Plus there's the 
sight line for the crosswalk, um, the crosses North Street uh, right there as well. So um, just wanted to, to add that I would be in support of, of extending that parking prohibition. Appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor. Yep. So what we'll do is we'll we'll do a little uh, survey on this and and um, little engineering survey work rather um, just to clarify and uh, we will confirm um, what an appropriate distance may be here um, and and we will quantify the number of parking spaces that are potentially lost and have a conversation prior to bringing anything forward but um, potentially discuss this at a future meeting. Okay. Any other comments from anyone on the commission? Okay, seeing and hearing none, is there any new business? Okay, and prior to adjourning, I just wanna recognize Beth Kaplan for her work on this commission over the last uh, few years. Beth is uh, leaving DPW to take a new position with the assessor's office. So Beth, I thank you for your service to the DPW and to this commission that she's uh, just done such a wonderful job of coordinating these meetings and and just taking absolutely impeccable notes and uh, super attention to detail. So we wish her well in her future endeavors. So thank you, Beth. Appreciate everything you've done for us. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Okay. All right. May I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna, would you like to adjourn? Yes. Jody? Yes. Wayne? Can I say no? Yes, of course. Can? Sure. <laughs> Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Adam? Yes. Diana? Yes. Jamila? Yes. That definitely passes. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next month. We'll Take miss care. you, Dad.